Uh, okay, first off, I want to apologize. The audio conditions here at my house are not optimal, but I noticed on the virtual black chamber that some people were having trouble with the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. So I wanted to um, just do a little video here and, and give you some instruction, uh, further instructions on how to solve it. So I'm using a monoalphabetic cipher from a previous quarter. I'm just going to copy it. I know it's a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And I actually don't remember what the keyword is for this, so it's perfect. Uh, what you're going to do, you're going to look right here on the colgate.edu link under useful links for cold bre code breaking in the virtual black chamber. If you click on that and go down a little bit, you see this frequency tool. Paste the ciphertext in there. Then hit letter frequencies. It's going to open up a new window that gives you uh, the most frequent characters in this text. And if we do a quick count, uh, see we have 25 out of 26, so one letter is not used. Um, we'll have to keep that in mind that one letter doesn't show up. And by process of elimination, you can figure out exactly what letter that is. So now we're going to go back here. A useful tool here is a substitution cipher tool. We're going to put the cipher text in right there. Um, and then what this allows us to do, all these lowercase letters are the plain text. And I don't know if you can see these boxes or not, but underneath each one of these is a box where we can put a cipher text letter, or our guess for the correct cipher text letter. So if we look at this frequency um, analysis report here, the cipher text letter T shows up. 140 times in this roughly a thousand character message, or 14% of the time. So we're going to guess that that's the most popular letter in English, which is E. So if we go plain text E goes to cipher text T. Oops. Let's make that capital so we don't cipher text T. Well, if we decrypt that, this is what we get so far just with the one letter. So we see that there are some doubled letters, and doubled E's, which is good and nothing that looks really crazy. Ah, so the next thing that we could do is say, well, the second most frequent letter is T. The second most frequent letter in the ciphertext is Q. Why don't we just make a guess? That that's what we're looking for. So plain text T and ciphertext Q. I decrypt that. Again, this doesn't look bad at all. You see T blank E showing up at the beginning. And that could very easily be the. And you see some double letters. You see T and E together a lot. Nothing that looks absolutely crazy. So what I want to do is look at, here's a QCT at the beginning. And up here, T, C, or T blank E. So I'm going to take a guess here that C equals H and that this first word is the. Uh, so plain text H, I believe, is represented by ciphertext C. So if I decrypt that, then I see other things start to pop out. Hmm. So I think probably the, the biggest clue right here is this H-E-T-H-E. -E. Um, I'm going to guess that that's the English word weather. It's just a guess. So let's see what happens if we follow up on that. Now the problem is, um, I it doesn't show me what these letters are up in this box, so I have to find it down here. But that's not hard. If you're using Firefox, you can just do Control F for find. Um, H E T H E is the pattern we're looking for, and we know that down in the ciphertext, it's going to be C for the H, T for the E, Q for the T. If we look in here, Okay, so I typed in CTQCT, -C -T, which corresponds to this H-E-T-H-E. -E. We'll find the instance right there. And I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Um, I'll make a part two with another five minutes.